Exodus chapter 14. We thank God for his word. We thank him for his promise. We thank him for his glory that is definitely in this place. We thank God for the angels of the Lord that is encamped around this house. We honor him for his glory, for his anointing. What would we do without the Spirit of God? How would we function without his Spirit? How would we function without his very presence? We thank him for his presence. Thank him for his anointing, for his power being in here, and for the ability to be able to preach and share and teach the word of God. Thank God for my wife, Apostle Joyce. Come on, clap your hands and bless God for her. Thank God for the saints. Thank God for this praise and worship ministry, this band. They could have just closed us out and sunk us into a frenzy. I don't know about you, but I honor and thank God for the gifts that's in this house. Such gifted, such gifted, such gifted young people. And we honor and thank God for them. We're going to look at Exodus chapter 14. And we're going to read sporadic throughout this chapter. And then we're going to go over to Ecclesiastics chapter number 3. The preacher's book. Exodus chapter number 14. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before Pihotharoth between Migdal and the sea, over against Belzephon. Before it shall ye encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness have shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his host, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. Verse number five says, And it was told king of Egypt that the people fled, and that the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, Why have we done this? that we have let Israel go from serving us. That's, that, that, that question is hilarious to me. It's hilarious because they're asking one another, they're saying, why have we done this as if it was their choice? Why have we done this that we have let Israel go from serving us? Verse 6 says, And Pharaoh made ready his chariot and took his people with him, and he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and over and, and captives over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with an high hand. Verse 10 says, and when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes. Watch this. And behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were so afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us and carried us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses, and Moses, and Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians, 
whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold. Uh, sound like God is about to give somebody a season of rest and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Verse 21 says, And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to, to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. Ecclesiastes chapter number 3, And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go. For Ecclesiastes chapter number 3, verse number 1 says, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. To everything. Everything. Absolutely. Everything that God has created. To everything there is a season. And a time to every purpose under the heavens. I want to look at verse number 15 where we're going to draw our thing from. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. For a few, mom for a few moments, I want to talk to you from the subject, Embracing a New Season embracing a new season. You may take your seats. Embracing a new season. Embracing a new season. Saints, as I was praying and asking God what would he have me to share on this morning, the Lord began to emphatically speak to me about seasons and times. He began to talk to me about the importance of understanding seasons and saints of God it is the divine will of God for us to discern the seasons of God the scripture says in first chronicles chapter number 12 verse number 32 it says that the men of Issachar were men who understood the time they understood the time and because they understood the time they knew how to navigate through life because they understood the time that they were in they understood the seasons of God. And it is imperative, once again, saints of God, for us to discern the seasons of God. And it's important because the manifestation of God's promises are predicated upon the seasons we're in. In other words, every promise of God has an assigned season to manifest. I'm going to say that again. Every promise of God has an assigned season to manifest. Every promise, and we know that the promises of God are already established. Before the foundation of the world, God has already established every promise. Everything that God is going to do in your life, every promise that he has spoken over your life, is already established. It's not that God is sitting back and he gives you a promise and then he try to figure out how he's going to do what he told you he was going to do. It's already done. This is why we can shout and praise in advance because the promises of God are already established. The scripture says in 2 Corinthians chapter number 1 verse number 20, it says that all the promises of God in him are yea and amen. 2 Peter 3 and 9 says this. It says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises. So every promise that God has given you, that promise is already established. It's already done. But, that pro but the manifestation of that promise is predicated upon the season that you're in. Are you hearing me? Because once again, every promise of God has an assigned season to manifest. Just because we hear the, the promise, it doesn't mean that the season or the time for it to manifest has come. Are y'all hearing me? 
So every promise has a season. Jesus was a promise given unto man. Are y'all hearing me? Even from Genesis throughout the Old Testament, we hear of the promises, the prophetic promise of God. That there shall be a son born of a virgin. Y'all know the scripture. In Genesis, the very first promise that God gave concerning him is that his head or the head of the serpent is going to be bruised by his heel. The promise. But even Jesus had to come at a particular season. A specific season. Are y'all hearing me? The scripture says in Galatians chapter number four and verse number four, it says, when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman. Even Jesus couldn't come when he wanted to. Even he had to wait for the season and the timing of God. So when God speaks of a promise or when God gives you a promise, it's in it's, that promise is predicated upon the season. Are y'all hearing me? So it's important for this is important because when you hear the voice of God say that it's time for you to shift or it's time for you to transition into a new season, you must have the willingness and the capacity to embrace that new season. Are y'all hearing me? You, you have to have the, the, the faith. You have to have the, the willingness. You have to have the obedience to transition into that new season. Because if you don't transition into that season, you, can forfeit, you will forfeit the promise that's assigned to that season. If you miss your season, you can miss your promise. And the devil would do everything in his power to prevent you from receiving the promise. He wants you to miss your season. Because he knows that if you miss your season... You miss your promise. Are y'all hearing me? Because once again, in every season, there is a promise. So when God tells you to shift or move or embrace the season or embrace a new season, it's important for you to embrace that season and move into the new season in spite of how things look. See, the enemy want to hold you in your old season. The enemy wants you to be focused on what was, are y'all hearing me, and even on what is and not focus on what is to come. We serve a prophetic God. God always speaks of what is to come. And if you're not careful or if you're so entangled or so overwhelmed on what you're going through, it's a possibility that you can miss your season and miss your promise. This is why the enemy comes and fight up against you because he wants you to be off focus. Are y'all hearing me? He wants you to be distracted because if you're distracted, then he can derail you and have you f focus on things that don't even matter. Are y'all hearing me? Turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, get your focus back. Say, you got it. You can't miss your season. Come on, tell him you can't miss this season. Come on, tell him again, you can't miss this season. Because if you miss your season, you miss your promise. I want you to get your Bibles out, and we're going to look at some scripture. Let's go to Isaiah chapter number 43. It's important for you to embrace this new season and some of you God is doing some new things in your life and it's important for you to embrace this new season that you're in some of you God has set you under an open heaven and it's important for you to embrace this new season are y'all hearing me don't get folk don't don't focus on things that don't matter it's important for you to embrace this new season are y'all hearing me Isaiah chapter number 43 he says, remember ye the things of old. And this is the prophet. He's speaking to the children of Israel. He said, remember ye not the things of old or the formal things. In other words, he said, don't even focus on the old things. He said, don't focus on what's in your past. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. He said, don't put your focus on things that you've been through. Are y'all hearing me? 
So he says, remember ye not the things of old. In other words, watch this. If you're going to embrace this new season that you're in, you have to divorce yourself from your past. And, and I know that's easier said than done, but it has to be done. Because if you're going to embrace the new season that God has for you, you have to divorce yourself from your past. You have to let your past go. Your past simply means you have to let people go. You have to forgive people. See, some of you, you're carrying folk. And you can't even cross over to your new season because you're holding unforgiveness in your heart. You're holding on to the past. You hold, yeah, I know they did it, but it's done. There's absolutely nothing that you can do about it. Are y'all hearing me? Let it go and let them go so that God can do what he wants to do in you in this season. Turn to your neighbor and tell them you need to forgive them. Come on, some of y'all, y'all don't want to turn because some of y'all, y'all still mad. Come on, turn to them and tell them you need to forgive them. As a matter of fact, turn to them and tell them, put your, that same prophetic finger that you was prophesying all those wonderful things. Come on, point at them and say, I, I need to forgive them because God has so much more for me. Say, I forgive them. I release them. And I'm letting them go. He says, he says, remember ye not the former things. He said, forget the things that's in your past. Divorce yourself from your past. Let your past go. It happened. It's done. There's absolutely nothing that you can do. I feel like some of y'all, y'all on a spiritual couch right now. You're getting counseling. Spiritual. It's done. Let it go. There's absolutely nothing you can do. There's no need of, you, you still mad? Look, let them go. Let them, let them, while well, I'm over here, let them go. Turn to somebody and say, let them go. Come on, say it again. Say, let them go. So he says, remember ye not the former things. He says, neither consider the things of old. See, this is important because when God is telling you to embrace your new season, it's important for you to understand that you have to let things go. It's important for you to understand that you have to let things go. You have to let your past go. And the reason why it's important because you cannot occupy two seasons at the same time. Are y'all hearing me? You, you cannot occupy two seasons at the same time. See, some of y'all, y'all trying to embrace your new season, but you still got old stuff. You're trying to bring old stuff into the new season, and God said, you can't have them both. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. Choose you this day who, what season that you're going to be in. You cannot have, you cannot abide in two seasons. You cannot embrace two seasons. Are y'all hearing me? Naturally so, we know that um, there's four seasons. We have winter, spring, summer, and fall. Winter starts December 21st. Summer starts March 20th. Are y'all hearing me? So when March 21st comes, that's winter. Fall is over. I know it may feel like fall, but actually you're in a new season. Amen. In spite of how it feels and in spite of how it looks, you're in a new season. Because time tells you you're in a new season. And what we need to understand about God is that God is a God of season and he is a God of timing. He's very precise when it comes to timing and seasons. So when December the 21st comes, you have just transitioned from fall into winter. And when, watch this, and when March 20th comes, you have transitioned from winter into spring. It may not feel like it. You may still see snow on the ground. It may still, it may still be cold outside. But time tells us, the season tells us that I'm in a new season. That's what faith does. Faith says, I'm in a new season, and I'm going to embrace this season in spite of how it feels. <laughs> it does not supposed to be this cold in this season, but I hear God says that I'm in a new season. So I'm not going to go by what I feel and what I see is what he said. And because he said it, I'm going to embrace his word over my feelings and my emotions. Are y'all hearing me? So he says, remember ye not the former things. He said, consider. He says, neither consider the things of old. So watch this. He says, in other words, he says, don't even consider. 
Don't even take into consideration those things of old. And you know, whenever you're talking about transition or whenever God is trying to transition you into a new season, the enemy is going to always bring up what was. He's going to always bring up your past. He's going to always try to inflict you, with, inflict you with fear and doubt. Are y'all hearing me? He's going to always talk about how you failed last time. I know you ain't going to try that. I know you ain't going to try that this time. I know you're not going to try that again. I know it didn't work in the last season, but it's going to work in this season. Because I'm in, are y'all hearing me? It may not work. Then. Some of y'all, y'all need to talk back to the enemy and say, you're right. It didn't work in that season. But I hear God in this season. And because, in this, because I'm in a new season, I'm going to embrace and do everything that God is calling me to do in this season. So he says, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Watch what God says. He says, behold. Behold, behold simply means to hearken. It means to listen. It means that I'm getting ready to say something that's going to catapult you into another dimension of your life. When he says behold, he, he says, I'm, going to, I'm about to say something that's going to change your life. He said, I need you to be very attentive because I'm getting ready to say something. We see it when he says to Simon, behold, Simon, behold, Simon, Simon. He says, Satan have desired to have you. So when you see the word behold in scripture, that means to really pay attention because God is getting ready to say something that's going to change your life for the rest of your life. So he says, behold, he says, watch this. He said, I will do a new thing. He, he gives us he gives us this prophetic promise he says I will do a new thing watch this he says now it shall spring forth he says now it shall spring forth what does that mean that means that in this season you're getting ready to experience gradual growth in the things of God are y'all hearing me he says, now it's getting ready to spring forth. Now you're getting ready to experience gradual growth. I know you've been lack. I know you've been slack. I know things been lean. But God said, now you're getting ready to experience gradual growth. Things is getting ready to explode. Are y'all hearing me? You're getting ready to experience the increase you've been crying about and fasted about. You're getting ready to experience the increase that God has showed you in dreams and visions. You're getting ready to experience the manifestation of the increase that God has spoken to you about. Are Y'all hear me. He said, now it's getting ready to spring forth. It's funny how God can speak prophetically. And then at the same time, he could say now. He says how he can speak what shall be. And at the same, in the same scripture, he can say, but now it's getting ready to happen. Are y'all hear me? He says, right now it's getting ready to spring forth. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm embracing this season right here. Y'all ain't saying it right. Come on, turn to your other neighbor and tell him I'm embracing this season. So he says, and now it shall spring forth. He says, shall you not know it? That's a question. He says, shall you not know it? In other words, I'm not telling you something new. I've already shown you. I've already told you. Some of you, you've been laying on the prophetic promise. Some of you, God has prophesied and he showed you in dreams and visions the things that he's going to do. He said, have not I shown you? He asked the question, he said, shall you not know it? He says, watch this. He said, I will make rivers or I will make a way in the wilderness. Look at the scripture. He says, I'm going to make a way in the wilderness. In other words, what he's saying is in this season, he says, I'm going to lead you. He says, in this season, I'm going to guide you. Now, if you allow me, he said, I'm going to lead you. If you allow me, I'm going to guide you. Now, watch this. When God leads you and guides you, he will cause you to take um, a major steps of faith when God is leading you. When God is leading you, he'll cause you to take steps of faith that you have never taken before. Because if you want something you never had, you got to do something you've never done. And God will lead you in a direction that you've never been before. Are y'all hearing me? It was in Israel in chapter number three of Joshua where God said, you have not been this way before. But I'm going to lead you into the promise. I'm going to lead you to a way that you have never been. So in this season, God is saying, you're going to take steps of faith you have never taken before. Don't fear. Don't fret. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Don't allow the enemy to put doubt in your heart. Don't allow the enemy to talk crazy in your mind. Because in this season, God said, I'm going to lead you. And some things are not going to make sense. But I'm going to lead you. 
And if you allow me, he said, I'm going to allow you to take major steps that you have never taken before. You know, you, you won't be able to run a reference and say, if God did it for him, he can do it for me. God said, no, I'm going to lead you. I'm going to lead you. I'm going to, you, you can't look at what I've done for them. I'm going to lead you. You can't look at what I've done for her. I'm going to lead you. Are y'all hearing me? So it's imperative that in this season, as you embrace this new season, you embrace everything in it. The leading of God. He's going to lead you to that promise. And sometimes that promise, he's going to lead you into areas, are y'all hearing me, that does not make sense. But it makes sense to God. Turn to your David and say, I'm experiencing something right now that doesn't make sense. Come on, say it again. Say, I'm experiencing something right now that doesn't make sense. God is causing us to go over to a building that is three, four, five times this size. It doesn't make sense. Because when we look at the people and we count the people, if we, if we counted the people, it doesn't make sense. But I'm not counting the people. Are y'all here? I'm not making that mistake. I'm not counting the people. Are y'all hearing me? I'm not making that mistake. I'm not counting the people. That's why I'm not being like, I'm not going to be like David and count the people. Because I understand people come and people go. Y'all ain't hearing me. The one that's sitting next to you shouting, saying, go ahead, preacher, go ahead, pastor. They'll be tiptoeing out the door next week. I'm not counting the people. Y'all ain't saying nothing up in this house. When? But when? But when? God has assigned a season to your life. You have to embrace everything within that season. Are you hearing me? That means you have to embrace the voice of God. You have to allow him to lead you. So he says here, he says, I will make rivers, so I will make a way in the wilderness. And rivers in the desert. Are y'all hearing me? So he said, I'll make rivers in the desert. What does that mean? Rivers in the desert simply speaks of the providence of God. God is simply promising. He said, I'm going to make rivers in the desert. What is God saying? God is saying, I'm going to pro provide in this season. This is why I don't count the people. <laughs> because God said, I'm going to provide. As you take these major steps of faith. As you embrace this new season that you're in. You know, embrace simply means to pull it in to you. It means to pull in, into your bosom when you embrace. When you embrace somebody, you pull them in. So when God is saying embrace the new season, you pull that new season into your bosom. Are y'all hearing me? So when God is saying embrace, he's saying pull that new season in. He said, in the, he said, watch this. He said, because you know what? Because I'm going to be your provision. You're going to experience the provision of God in this season. Some of you, God has called, is, is um, encouraging you to open up a business. And some of you, you're scared to do it. But God said, if you do it, I'm going to be your provision. You're going to experience the provision of God. Some of you, God is encouraging you to go and buy a home. But you feel you, you're looking at the news, and the news is saying that this is not the right time to buy a home. This is not the right time to build. This is not time to step out. This is not, because if you look at the economy, you know, and gas prices, see, some of us, we don't realize, we, we don't even realize that we're not even a part of this kingdom. Oh, are y'all hearing me? We're not even a part of this kingdom. This stuff, listen, we serve a God that has a cattle on a thousand hills. Everything belongs to God. I don't care how high the gas is, I'm going to still put gas in my car. Why? Because God is going to provide the I like what she did. She, she said, turn to somebody and say, say you, you still, you still going to go. God is going to provide for you. He said, I'm going to be rivers in the desert. When the last time you saw a river in the desert? He said, I'm going to be a river in the desert. Are y'all hearing me? He said, I'm going to be a river in the desert. In other words, I'm going to cause the miraculous things to happen for you. Are y'all hearing me? Watch this. Let's go real quick. I got to move quickly. Let's look at Mark chapter 2, verse number 21. This is why it's important for you to embrace this season. It's important for you to embrace this season. 
It's important for you to do the things that God is calling you to do in this season. And you can't afford to miss this season. Are y'all hearing me? You can't afford to miss this season. You have to embrace this new season. In other words, watch this. In other words, you have to be willing. If you're going to embrace the season, you have to be willing to embrace change. Uh, this is... This is hard for some of you. <laughs> some of you, y'all, very analytical, and y'all need stuff to, you know. Some of y'all, y'all got some issues with change. God said, you're going to embrace se- a new season. If you're going to embrace a new season, you have to be willing to embrace change. You can't, you can't hold on to things as they used to be. Some of y'all, y'all still loving the 70s music. Face, <laughs> face. Things changed. And they're all right, but things, it's, it's, stuff changed. You still, you still caught in the night, stuff changed. You still caught in stuff, stuff have changed. Are y'all hearing me? Stuff changed. So you have to be willing to embrace change. You can't remain, everything can't remain the same. You have to be willing to change. Uh We'll never see the beauty of a butterfly if the butterfly remained in the cocoon. You have to be willing to go through a metamorphosis. You have to be willing to embrace change. Turn to your neighbor and tell him you have to be willing to change. Watch this. Mark chapter number 2, verse number 21. Jesus says here, and Jesus is speaking, he's teaching. He says, no man soweth a piece of new cloth on an old garment. He's making a point. He said, no man soweth a new cloth on an old garment. Else the new piece that fill it, take away from the old. In other words, what he's saying, he said, no man take something new and put it on something old. Remember, you can't live in two seasons. You cannot occupy two seasons. You have to choose which one you're going to embrace. You have to make a choice which one you're going to embrace. So he says in verse number 21, the B clause, he says, It taketh away from the old, and the rent is made worse. In other words, he says, when you try to combine the two, it takes value away from the new. It devalues what God is trying to do. Are y'all hearing me? Then in verse number 22, he says, no man putteth new wine in an old wine bottle. He's trying to teach the people how to transition into the new season. How to transition into a new dispensation. How to embrace a new hour, a new moment, a new time. Are y'all hearing me? So he says, no man putteth new wine in an old wine bottle. He says, or else the new wine would burst the bottle. So in other words, when you take new wine and you put it in old wineskin, one verse says, it will cause the old wineskin to burst because the new wine expands, the new wine grows. Are y'all hearing me? See, when God is talking about new things, he's he's talking about increase and growth. And what God is getting ready to do in this season, he's getting ready to increase us and he's getting ready to grow us. Are y'all hearing me? And we cannot take the new things that God is getting ready to do and put it in what was. See, some of us, we need to change our whole mindset, our whole way of thinking, because some of us, our way of thinking is the old way. And God said, I'm trying to do a new thing, and I can't do a new thing because you're still carrying around that old bottle. The old bottle also represents the containment. It represents our body. It represents our mindset. It represents our way of thinking. It represents our mentality. Am I teaching too long? Are y'all hearing me? 
So he says, watch this. He says, so you have to have a new mindset. You have to have a new mentality. You have to have new faith in this season. You can't believe like you used to believe because it's going to require more faith. I know you, was, you, you were very content with that mustard seed, that little faith. <laughs> and that little faith got you little things. Praise God for those little things. Come on, say praise God for the little things. But, but in this season, God want to do some big things, so it's going to require a big faith. Okay, I done lost the church. It requires, it requires big faith. So he says, he says, watch this. He says in verse number 22, he says, no man put a new wine into old bottles or else the new wine do its burst the bottles and the wine is spilled and the bottle will be marred. In other words, the bottle will be blemished. The bottle will be destroyed. But new wine must be put into new bottles. Somebody say I'm in my new season. With my new self. With my new way of thinking. My new mentality. I brought it over in to this new season. Now let's look here in Exodus chapter number 14 as I prepare to close. The book of Exodus is the book of departure. It is the book of Exodus. It is the book of deliverance. In this book, we see the deliverance of God, God delivering his people out of Egypt. Are y'all hearing me? And it says here, and we're going to start at verse number one. It says here that the Lord spake unto the children of Israel that they encamp, that they turned and encamp before, before by Hotharoth between Migdal and the sea. So what we see here is God is getting ready to transition the children of Israel out of Egypt and transition them into a whole new season of their life. They don't realize it, but they're in the best season of their life. Are y'all hearing me? They're in what we call a defining moment. This is the greatest season of their lives. I'm going to say that again. We're, they're in the greatest season. It doesn't look like it. Brother Curtis, but they're in the greatest season of their lives. They're in what we call once again a defining moment. They're in a season of manifestation. In other words, the, the promise that God has given their forefathers that God had told Abraham, Isaac and Jacob is getting ready to manifest in their lives. They've been in Egypt for 430 years. And now God is getting ready to transition them, bring them out, and take them into the blessing. Are y'all hearing me? He's preparing them getting, them, getting them ready to go into the promise of God. Are y'all hearing me? So he's transitioned. They're in a season of transition. This is their season. And the Bible says in verse number three, it says, For Pharaoh will save the children of Israel. Now they're coming out of Egypt. They've been brought out, and God told them to go and encamp in the wilderness. And the Bible says that Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel that they are entangled in the wilderness. The wilderness have shut them in. And then verse number four says, and Pharaoh said, I, and, and, or the Lord said, I will harden the heart of Pharaoh and he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon his host that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. So in other words, what God said, he said, I'm going to deal with Pharaoh's heart. I'm going to make Pharaoh and Pharaoh is a typology or symbolic of the enemy. So he says, I'm going to deal with the enemy and I'm going to make the enemy so upset in this season because he's going to see what God is getting ready or what God is doing in the lives of his people. Are y'all hearing me? So in verse number three or verse number, let's jump down to verse number, number five. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled and the heart of Pharaoh and of his service was turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this? Why have we let Israel go from serving us? And he made ready his chariots and took his people with him. And he took 600 chosen chariots. So he gathered his people and he said, we're going to stop them from experiencing this new season. We're going to prevent them from transitioning into this new season. We're going to prevent them from embracing this new season. You must understand when God start talking to you about a new season, when God start telling you to embrace the new season, the enemy is going to do whatever he can to prevent you from embracing that season. 
Are y'all hearing me? He's going to do, he's going to do whatever he can. He'll get into the heart of people. You'll find yourself bickering and arguing with people. You find yourself focused on stuff that don't even matter. Yeah. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, it don't even matter. Amen. Especially in this season. Amen. I don't know what your it is, but it don't matter. Are y'all hearing me? So he says in verse number 10, or verse number, um, yeah, verse number 10. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel, watch this, watch their response. Now we can learn from the children of Israel what not to do. Watch this. He says, and when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. Remember, I told you you have to keep your focus. Stay focused. Are y'all hearing me? So it says that the children of Israel march after them. In verse 10. And the B clause says, and they were so afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. Now, now what Israel, or what the enemy does here, is he afflicts fear on them. Because fear is the enemy of faith. Are y'all hearing me? And fear will stagnate you or stop you from transitioning into a new season. Because what fear does, fear will cause you to be paralyzed in, the, in your season. Are y'all hearing me? Fear paralyzes you. Fear stops you. It prevents you from progressing. It prevents you from taking steps of faith. And what the enemy does, he did here, is that he afflicted fear. The scripture says they were so afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said, watch this, they said unto Moses, they said, why have you done this? Didn't we tell you? Didn't we tell you? They said uh, to Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? They said, you have taken us. Now watch this. They, they, they are so off focus right now. God, understand it. They're in the best season of their life. And they're saying, why have you done this? Why have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? See, this is why it's important for you to understand and discern, as I told you at the opening of the message, it's important for you to discern the season that you're in. Because you may be in your summer season, but it don't feel like it. It doesn't look like it. You may be in your best season, but it doesn't look like it. They were in their best season, but it didn't look like it because the enemy was drawing close to them. They were focused more on the enemy than they were on what God was getting ready to do. So it caused them now to complain and murmur. They said, why have you done this? Why have you brought us out into the wilderness and uh, brought us out into the wilderness that we should die? He said, didn't we tell you to leave us? And I'm in verse number 12. He says, did not we tell you in Egypt, leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had better for us to serve the Egyptians that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses, I, I, I thank God for a strong leader. Are y'all hearing me? Thank God for people in your life that can speak a word when you become discouraged and depressed. Are y'all hearing me? So watch this. Moses said unto the people, he said, don't fear. He said, don't be afraid. God is getting ready to do something, but you have to embrace the season. I know things don't look like you thought they were going to look, but you have to embrace the season. I know things don't seem like you thought they were going to be, but you have to embrace the season. So he says, don't fear. Remember, the opposite of fear is faith. So in other words, when he say don't fear, what he's telling them is, is you have to have faith. You have to believe God. You have to trust God. Are y'all hearing me? So he says here, he says, and Moses says, fear not, verse number 13. He says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For these Egyptians that you see today, you will not see no more forever. Are y'all hearing me? Verse number 20, verse number 15, and, no, verse number 14, and verse number 15 in conclusion. Verse number 14, he says, the Lord shall fight for you. He said, God is going to fight for you. The Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea, or verse number 15, I'm at verse 21, verse 15, and the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me, he said, Speak unto the children of Israel 
He said, and tell the children of Israel to go forward. What does that mean? Tell the children of Israel to transition into their new season. Tell the children of Israel to embrace this new season. I know it doesn't look like it. I know Pharaoh and his army is before us, is behind us. And I know we have the Red Sea before us. And I know we have mountains on this side and mountains on this side. And we're in this wilderness by ourselves. But if you just have the faith to embrace this season, in spite of how it looked around you or the things that's going on around you, if you would embrace this season and know that this is your season of transition, this is your season of better. This is your season of increase. Are y'all hearing me? This is your season of multiplication. I don't care if your money may be funny and your change may be strange. It doesn't take God long to change that. Are y'all hearing me? Because when God speaks a word and when you enter into that season and when you embrace that season, everything that God says has to happen. Every promise that he spoke has to happen. Are y'all hearing me? One day they're in Egypt. The next day they're out. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. God can change your situation, but you have to embrace it. That means I have to change my way of thinking. I have to change my mentality. I have to think, change my way of do, doing things. I have to change how I talk to God. I have to change my prayer. Instead of coming to God and always telling him, him my problems, I may need to just come with praise and tell him how wonderful he is. Right. Instead of bringing God my problems all the time, I need to just... Set those problems. The scripture says that we cast our cares upon him. If I cast my cares upon him, then I need to start talking about how good he is. Start thanking him for the things that I know that he's going to do in this season. That's faith talking. Are y'all hearing me? Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you have to embrace this season. Come on, clap your hands and bless the Lord in this house. Come on, we can do God better than that. Clap your hands. The Lord began to speak to me about, about embracing, about making sure that we embrace this season, making sure that you embrace the season that you're in. And don't, once again, don't look at stuff that you're going through. Don't look at what you don't have. I dare you, you, you have to start prophesying this season. You have to start speaking that this is the best season of my life. Are y'all hearing me? You have to start decreeing that this is the best season of my life. Israel could have missed their season. If they would have been focused on the Egyptians, they would have missed it. They were ready to go back. <laughs> They're ready to go back. 430 years of slavery. 430 years. You know why they were ready to go back, Sister Renee? Because they had become content. They had become complacent. They were all right. We are right with serving. We are right with being a slave. We are right with, we're okay. I'm okay with lack. I'm okay with poverty. They have become content. They have become com so complacent that when God said, I'm getting ready to take you into better, I'm getting ready to take you into more. But because they were so complacent, it's like, I'm all right. Didn't we tell you? Didn't we tell you I'd be better off back there where I was? That is not God's will for your life. God has better for you. Lift your hands. I'm going to pray for this house. I'm going to pray for you. Lift your hands all over the place, all over the building. Father, we thank you. Lord God, we bless you. And Father, I pray for everyone that's under the sound of my voice. God, I know this is what you're saying. I know, God, this is what you're speaking. I know, God, you're telling us to forget those things that are behind us and to stretch, to reach for those things that are set before us. God, I know that you're saying that we're in a new season. And new things shall occur in this season. And God, I know that you're telling us, Father, to forget what was, forget the old season, forget the old time, and to embrace this new season that we're in. God, I know that you're saying we're in a season of increase, a season of multiplication. 
A season, God, of advancement. A season of promotion. And Father, we thank you and we bless you. God, even as we embrace this season, we thank you, Father, for the testimonies that shall come forth out of this season. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you. We bless you, Father, as we embrace better. As we embrace better. God, we give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.